All right, YouTube, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 105, Demons and Tongues by Alma White. Very uh, strange little uh, religious manuscript, and it is. It's coming from the Pillar of Fire, which was a, a Methodist order uh, back in the early 20th century. It still actually exists, although in much weakened form. Uh, this particular tract is one part of manifest against the speaking in tongues sort of Pentecostal movement on the one hand as well as a work of general demonology. Uh, on the other hand, it actually gets into some uh, then modern conceptions of the devil, which is uh, the main reason why I actually decided to release this. I'm not so interested uh, in the debate between those who say it's baptism by tongues and those who say it's uh, faith in Jesus specifically and this tongue speaking stuff is demonic possession. The coverage of it as a form of possession though is of interest, I suppose. Uh, secondary to its overall uh, demonology purpose. Now, as always, link in the description to where you can purchase my edition of this work off of Amazon. Second link as well to my books blog if you're interested in demonology. Uh, there are many other works available. I'm editing one as we speak. I've put the other two herbals, one that's half done and unillustrated, and the other that is done except for illustrations. I put them on hold. I have one other work that I want to release first. I wanted to pad out sort of the, the demonology material here. Now, Alma White is an interesting individual. First uh, true female clergy person uh, in the United States, actually. She was a feminist. She had ties to the Ku Klux Klan. Yes, if you can reconcile those two together. Uh, I would like to point out, of course, the suffragette movement was tied in with extreme religiosity and with eugenics something that perhaps some people don't uh, quite remember. Planned Parenthood and eugenics, uh, that is uh, true as well, although you can read into that what you will. Uh, Margaret Sanger days are kind of over uh, on that front. Um, as to this particular work, though, what primarily is of concern here to somebody who's interested in reading about the occult is its treatment of Satan, its treatment of uh, demons and demon possession as well, sort of subjugated to that overarching concept. Uh, the Satan of the early 20th century was more or less incorporeal, that is, not literally wandering around as a little red man in a robe or something like that. If you look at older works, Satan is very physical, uh, capable of physically appearing or literally physical, as in, in a cave somewhere, the literal Satan is sitting there fomenting destruction. In the early 20th century, Satan is more incorporeal, however, there is a very real, invisible, yes, but very real presence of Satan and his demonic legions. Now, in this particular work, it is said that that influence is growing, early 20th century, sort of late 1800s, generally Victorian era through the Edwardian uh, period of time. The idea that people were more materialistic, they were fixated upon secular education, abandoning religiosity in many cases. This particular tract, uh, it takes one thing out of context, that is, uh, it looks at the Pentecostal movement in particular in Los Angeles. Now, what do we know about Los Angeles? Perhaps even back then, by the way, a hundred years ago, already a, a fairly large <laughs> developed area, very urban, not exactly the outlands of small town America. And so the opinions there, uh, the actions of people a little bit different maybe from the countryside. Additionally, this work uh, delves into something else of interest here, specifically if you're interested in eugenics at all. If you're into that, you'll love this work. Uh, it claims that the black race are the offspring, this probably comes from her associations with the clan, I would assume, uh, that the black race were the offspring of Canaan, and that to them, to the pillar of fire and Alma White in general, I suppose, it made sense that the, the many of the first wave of Pentecostal uh, tongue speakers entering that area uh, were actually, as she says, colored people, uh, black individuals as opposed to whites. Um, then goes on to say, well, there's a weakness in that race. But at the same time, this is actually slightly remarkable considering the period it's written in. And we might not think quite as lowly of Mrs. White uh, for actually having this opinion, I suppose. Actually makes the claim, which is a little bit out there, actually kind of progressive for the time period, that this doesn't mean that these individuals are incapable of proper Christian tutoring, uh, incapable of, of 
understanding sort of that Satan's trying to curse them and that Pentecostalism is evil. Uh, if her clan associations were any indication, you'd think that she'd think the opposite, that they were just so fallen that it was like animalism or something along those lines. Actually, um, towards the end of this particular work, she comes off almost as a social progressive of her era uh, of sorts. So it talks a great deal about Satan, about the character of Satan as it was seen in the early 20th century, uh, especially by the Pillar of Fire and by the Pentecostals as well. It uh, points out that the different preachers, uh, the, the different uh, tongue speakers that were there, would repeatedly say that all other preachers, their speaking in tongues was demonic possession, their own was the Holy Spirit. The Pillar of Fire simply goes one further and says, no, they're all possessed. None of this is, is biblical in any manner. It then goes into its own interpretation of Revelation, which is actually uh, perhaps closer to the truth, honestly, uh, than what many modern Christians actually think. They think that it details future events, not past events, of course. So it's a very interesting work. It's 64 pages in length. Uh, it, actually, it was uh, considerably longer, uh, but once edited because... It used uh, an overly large trim size and spacing in the original document. It was actually quite a bit shorter than it originally uh, seemed to be. Uh, interesting work. If you're interested in demonology, I think you'll appreciate this most. If you're into eugenics, uh, definitely a primary source from that period of time, from the 1910s, uh, that you would probably enjoy as well. If you're into that sort of kind of old, dated, almost creepy stuff in many cases, a lot of the writings from the end of the 1800s, maybe let's say 1885 through the 1920s. Very strange, very dark works uh, that embody Satan as being quite literally present in a way uh, that perhaps was mostly absent outside of certain superstitious texts from the Enlightenment through until that actual era, you know, when people were focused on maybe more technological and mechanical endeavors and philosophy and things of that nature. So as before, link in the description to where you can purchase my edition of this work, second link to my books blog. If you're interested in other occult manuscripts, I've written some myself. I've edited many others. Uh, there's the new herbal category there for people who are into that sort of material. Alchemy, it's all there. Uh, a little bit of everything. That's about all. Peace out.